Guys, this is Chaos Paper Tape, and today you join me for episode 7 of Solar Civilization. And the first thing we're doing today is going back to the moon with basically the same craft. Um, because, well, there's a lot more science we mined off the moon, and I have this craft ready, so I might as well send it. Uh, I'm hoping today to unlock docking. Because then I can obviously build space stations, and my next moon lander can be an Apollo type thing. With um, the new launch vehicle you probably haven't seen yet. Uh, I'm trying to put the chronology in my head because I make these so regularly and I'm editing some while voicing over the others and uploading others, so it's kind of, you know, hard to keep track of. But um, anyway, this is Ronnie Kerman, one of uh, the new recruits who has probably done a flight before, I'm not really sure. Um, We've only lost one Kerbal yet. Uh, that was, what was it, Kurt Kerman, one of the pilots died on landing because of uh, badly built planes. Anyway, we'll ditch those fairings and, uh, it, well, we'll cruise up to Apoaps. Um, and ignite this engine, our big, very efficient, the most efficient engine we have right now still. 410 ISP. And a very, that's be probably partly because it has a very large engine bell, which is good for vacuum engines. Anyway, we're getting up to speed. This is, of course, at uh, four times time accelerate, as I always say. Because a lot of these are at four times time accelerate. Because I like to put lots of content, lots of content in um, videos without kind of having them long and draggy. I think this is the longest video I've done so far because there is quite a bit in it. Um, but I try to keep them under twenty minutes because you know you probably get bored of me. Um, but uh, anyway, um, let's set off to the moon on moonrise, as uh, always. Just kind of ignite your engines whilst well when you see the moon coming over the horizon, unless your engines are really unpowerful or you have a very heavy spacecraft then uh, well basically you have a, if you have a low thrust to weight ratio then you're going to want to burn early but anyway we have our encounter on a prograde orbit I believe the Apollo spacecrafts um, use retrograde orbits because that would put them on a free return trajectory so um, yeah that's uh, but I don't bother doing that I tried to get a grab a crew report there but I've already um, uh, not an EVA report even, but I've already done one above the uh, uh, from high above the moon. So I mean, there's not much else you can say other than yeah, looks pretty uh, pretty grey. Um, this uh, yeah, uh, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, I was thinking of the new rescale Kerbin. The moon and that looks amazing. Uh, there's probably a video on my channel when this is uploaded of the uh, of the new rescale Kerbin. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, we're gonna put ourselves down in this crater. The um, I think this is the East Far Side Crater, because we haven't been here yet, and then we'll plant a flag saying that we have been here so that we don't screw anything up, and grab an EVA report from flying above. Um, that's basically the same as getting it from the ladder, because, you know, that's how the game's registered. Um, you can't really see in, uh, the, the engine's ignited until it's fully ignited, because it uses, like, some really weird texture things, but it looks really awesome. Anyway, we'll ditch that, because now we need to land and that's not very easy on it. Actually, that's a pretty large engine bell. We probably could land on that, but uh, we have these landing legs that the engineers have put so much time into, so we might as well, uh, you know, use it. Um, at four times time accelerate, it's very jittery between me looking in the cabin for surface uh, info and coming out for actual normal info, but now we are back into one times time accelerate, I believe. Um, nope. Now we're into one times time accelerate, and we land with our very wide landing legs, but it still almost falls over because it's not visits because because it can fall over the other way. I didn't really think that through brilliantly, but anyway, <clears throat> we'll need to take a crew report, obviously. Um, grab uh, some you know observations. We've already taken that report, so we'll reset the brain of the astronaut, I guess, um, and then take a quick fly down to the surface. I don't spend too much time on the moon this time, like last time I went and looked at a crater, um, well, a canyon more like. Uh, the canyons on the moon look super awesome. I want to build some bases overlooking canyons. Anyway, that's uh, some reports. Um, and now we'll plant our flag, our little hexagon flag, I think it is. It's, um, no, you can't really see it there. It's, it's the hexagon flag, like the pentagon, but better. The east far side landing. I think that's basically just all I put. And then landing number two. I'm never very inventive with my plaque text because by the time I've landed, I'm like, eh, 
I'm done with that. But anyway, back into four times time accelerate because it's funny to watch them fall over very quickly. And we'll take um, run our experiments, uh, grab all the science we can, and then we're leaving because we must get back to Kerbin for. Um, well, he's got to be back for dinner actually. This is oh, it's been a day. He's already late, and you know he's getting kind of tired of the dinner inside that canister on top. <coughs> um, now I'm a little confused because. Um, Sometimes attack life support appears to be um, one unit of uh, like uh, one one unit of food, one unit of water is equal to one day. But apparently, it's it's like a third. And then in the um, episode I'm recording right now, it's gone back to a day. I don't know. It's very complicated. Um, maybe this is just a very unhungry Kerbal. Um, but anyway, we'll gra get back into our cam. Uh, after grabbing those experiments, because we can't really, well, those will all burn up on re-entry, so we kind of, you know, want what's in them. I mean, you know, we could do a test of what happens to data when it burns up, but, uh, well, we've already done that enough, so we might as well um, grab the uh, grab the reports. Oh, and you can see that Keithane has been, I've scanned a bit of Keithane on Kerbin. I'm not sure if by this point I've updated the mod, but I have now, and, uh, and you'll see more of Keithane in this episode. I want to have Keithane in my bases so they can be self-sustaining. I have been thinking about putting bases places, um, and uh, I think lathe would be good because you can use tack equipment, which t which obviously I won't need any to bring any oxygen because you know lathe has o an oxygen atmosphere, and um, I won't need to uh, bring any um, water because there's water there and you can just bring this little refinery unit that tack gives you and then that'll be fine so i'll just need food and we'll configure that out when we get to it but anyway we're about to land and i believe we go back into one time nope i decided against that okay what's next um gonna recover the vessel Ooh, just take a quick look at the science we got um put it into one times time accelerate for the loading scene nice one me we got 342 science from that so we will unlock lots of new things but now we've got a very similar craft to the one we launched in the last episode going to Moho. This is the Sun Diver spacecraft. Or, I'm not... I thought, what did I call this? I should call it Daedalus. Next time I get a chance, I'm going to call it Daedalus because it's flying really close to the sun and its wings will probably melt off. Um, Greek mythology, I think. <laughs> um, go read it. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, one of the biomes a lot of people forget is the sun. You can get high over the sun and low down near the sun. You do have to get quite close to the sun, so I have used the Moho craft because it has a ridiculous amount of delta V. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this, uh, was it? Oh yeah, I had a few problems with the spacecraft. Not now, but, um, when I was start recording this, when I first recorded this, I had a problem with FAR because I had an updated, um, module manager, and that's Ferrum Aerospace, because, uh, I don't know, I, I just forgot. So, but everything's fixed now. Um, that's the only problem with all these updates is the mods keep going in and out of stuff. And I've been thinking, um, I'm not sure how long it is till 0.24 comes out, but I'm wondering, I mean, if, I, if I'll update, because obviously there'll be costs implemented and that might make this harder, but maybe by then I'll have developed some kind of um, heavy launch vehicle and then uh, I can, uh, and then I can basically just pick up loads of satellite missions, I guess, and just shove them all in it and just get loads of money. That's a thought. Um, I hope they have missions like that. But anyway, now we're setting off for the sun. Um, I'm not sure if... Uh, I'm pretty sure this will get down close to the sun. I'm not sure if it'll melt when it gets there, but um, I'll set an alarm clock at some point. Uh, we have our Moho Explorer plane change in 49 days. I believe by now I've actually started implementing seven day intervals between launches because um, it gives me some reality and it means that um, the si uh, that, um, like it passes time quicker so that uh, as if I launched every day then I'd basically be done with everything and then have to just like uh, and then and then the moho Explorer will still be way away from its target and it, it'll just it's just better to leave windows between things but if you look in the map view now there's tons of asteroids I've like l I've tracked a bunch but now there's a bunch more unknowns. It's getting a little spammy. It's hard to see, but um, it'll be fine. Anyway, we've burned off uh, most of the delta V. Um, we do uh, well. That was kind of a rough estimate, just to show me timing, and we get most of that. But then we lose our uh, power about 200. Uh, well, 
we run out of power about 200 delta V away, um, if that actually makes any sense. But uh, right now I'm going to take a couple of reports of mystery goo and materials made from high above the sun and transmit it back for some all wonderful science. Um, anyway, now onto another plane, Jebediah Kerman at the helm. This is a four times time accelerator because it's quite long and it looks funny to fly planes at four times time accelerator. We're going to fly to the other runway as a little test and uh, take a few reports. This is my science plane. Um, and it does fly surprisingly well, actually. Uh, not as well as a... Oh, wait. Yeah, this is actually... Because a lot of planes I build, they, they won't stay stable without SAS. They'll just, like, fall out. But this does, although I didn't realise that at this point. Um, but, yeah, FARS and done a... For the Ferrum Aerospace update is really nice. Although, um... Well, I like it because it tears off your wings if you screw it up, and that gives a little bit of a, oh my god, how do I return stuff from space? But Scott Manley seems to have figured it out, so, you know, that'll, that's, I, maybe I will. Um, but, uh, yeah, so space planes might be hard. Um, and another thing, the, one of the big problems is, it has a real problem slowing down. It likes to stay going fast, so actually, this actually had a pretty good time of slowing down, but with bigger aircraft coming at higher speeds, it's really hard to flare and slow down. You just fly over your runway. It's kind of difficult, and I get that problem a little bit here by, uh, you can see I've gone past the hangars and I'm coming to the end of the runway, but I slow it down just in time and turn it around. It's kind of less um, exciting at four times time to accelerate, but it does slow down soon. Um, God, this does look really fast, but I, I wanted to put it all in the video and uh, you know, I didn't want to have a really long video, as I always say. So I'll take the science. Um, I'll you just take science. I'll take some uh, experiments. I'll do some experiments. I'll drop the ladder, and now we're in one time to time accelerate. So I'll take a few reports. Um, that's from flying over apparently the ocean or water or whatever. But uh, it's but I get additional science from actual flying over the ocean. So it's actually a different biome. So we'll take a few EVA reports. Well. An EVA report and a surface sample, just dig up some of that concrete, and then uh, Jeb feels like going and looking at some of these old parts, which look very cool, although I'm pretty sure um, the fuel tank was actually the same diameter as the pod, because those are the only parts you had, so it would have been really hard to get to space with uh, those diameter parts, but it's still nice to look at them and lie down next to them for a little while. But anyway, we must go home and return our experiments. Um, because, uh, well, yeah, I could run around for a while, and I have checked before, there is no additional science from going up that control tower, but you can, and maybe I will one day. Maybe I'll have an outpost there. But it is useful to have this, because it's about 30 kilometers downrange of the other runway, so if you're returning something like a shuttle or a space plane, and somehow it doesn't burn up or be torn apart by far, then you can um, have a second landing site if you uh, screw it up, which I uh, undoubtedly will. Although I've had pretty bad results trying to land space shuttles on this runway. You do need quite a long runway. But anyway, we must return home and go into mad, frenetic, four times time accelerate flying again. Um, so yeah, let's ignite the engine. Because there's no actual motors on these wheels, which is, it would be nice to have them. But we'll go through this hangar, a little bit of a slalom. And then uh, go this way and then turn around so we have enough runway to take off. Um, but it is a pretty short runway. Um, yeah, so let's point down the little dirt runway, fly over some grass, get up to speed, and take off back into four times time accelerate. Because, uh, well, I didn't feel like cutting it all out. I basically got kind of did lots of cutting and stuff. It still was too long a video, and I wasn't happy with how it looked. So I just did it like this. I don't know if um, if you don't like how the videos are edited, actually, if you would prefer it that there was less accelerate time acceleration or more cutting or I don't know if you, just kind of just give them feedback of how how the videos are. But I seem to get pretty positive responses, so I'll just keep doing what I'm doing because I'm enjoying it. So you know, um, but I do have like a ridiculous amount of videos. Like uh, I have I had to make folders in my little uh, place where I keep all the videos for to be uploaded in processing just to sort it out and stuff because. Uh, I get a little, I get a little, uh, I don't like it when everything's messy and I can't see exactly what's going on. It's, well, it's not OCD, it's just the human condition. I bet it's really annoying if you have OCD and people are constantly going, oh, I'm so OCD. It's just like, oh, thanks, that's actually a mental condition. Anyway, um, let's fly back to the runway. 
and hopefully be able to slow down but I have come in uh, fairly nicely and slowed done most of my slowing down far out so we're at a landing speed right now which is lucky because we touch down we break and Jebar Dyer Kerman looks very happy about that but anyway now we have a, um, a launch of a rocket my newest launch vehicle with the engine cluster as I talked about last episode that was the grasshopper test um, this will be an attempt to be reusable but um, doesn't go great uh, but anyway this is two keythane probes uh, this is madly overpowered for this launch vehicle is far too powerful for what it's actually lifting but um, because I want to be using this reusably then you know uh, I want to be using this in the future, I thought I might as well test it out straight away. Annoyingly there's a problem with the oxidizer, so I do lose a little bit of fuel, which sucks. Um, so anyway, we'll ditch that stage and race it to orbit so that we can try and land it on the ocean. And another thing I do need to do is add enough fuel to get to that other continent so I don't have to keep landing on the ocean, because that doesn't go particularly well. And I want to unlock the larger landing legs so that uh, it's more sturdy on landing. But anyway, we'll skip through that. Um, and now this is coming down and landed. It's done a bit of deceleration, but I've left all the engines on. Um, and as I accelerate, those just fall off because they were really damaged on re-entry. Um, they were shaking around and the struts were the, all that was holding it on. But I run out of fuel and hit the ocean again. It's not brilliant. But anyway, back in orbit. Um, we've got our probes going. So we'll set off the, moons, uh, the satellite for the moon first. And do take note. I didn't open the solar panels on the one that's going to be heading for Mimus. Basically, these are heading for Mimus and the Moon, so I can scan them and look at potential base places, places for bases. Um, rhyming is fun, uh, but yeah, I didn't open the solar panels on the other probe, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, actually, we'll see how that goes in the next episode, but I can tell you not well. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, start heading off with this probe to the moon, and uh, yeah, I think the moon's a pretty good place to have um, a base for mining keythane. Uh, but the Mi but Mimus would probably be better because it's e it takes less delta v to get to and land on. And now I'm just trying to figure out where's the best place to put myself in a polar orbit, and I'll just do it from my moon or into from when I'm actually in the sphere of influence of the moon, because it's just easier to work with. And I'm going to put myself in a fairly high orbit, um, because I felt like it. It's probably not actually brilliantly effective, but um, I'm going to. So, you know, yeah. Anyway, we'll, uh, while that's setting off, we will um, send our, our Minmus satellite, um, our Minmus, um, yeah, our Minmus satellite to head out to Minmus and uh, start scanning for key thing. Um, so we'll see how, uh, how that goes. And... Um, yeah, we're really having trouble getting the intersect for some reason. So I decided to screw it and just burn because I'm awesome. So, you know, and I, um, I'm i really not awesome. But anyway, I burn at the descending node so that it comes in not even on the equator. But it, it it's fine. It means I don't have to do as much of a course correction because I'm coming in on a polar orbit anyway. So anyway, we'll leave that going and we'll just warp out to the... Uh, warp out to the moon. I forget to set an alarm clock for the uh, um, for the Minmus satellite, but I will because um, I'm going to be coming back to that. Uh, anyway, so I need to put myself in a polar orbit and try and not and try and bring my periaps down at least a bit. Um, yeah, so that's looking fairly polar. It's not perfect, but um, I'm probably not going to be. Uh, all that means is it's probably not going to, you know get perfect coverage of the poles, and the poles are really mountainous, so I'm not really sure I want a base there. Um, but 150 kilometer orbit should be fine, um, and it means I can scan Keythane at 50 times time accelerate, which is rather useful. Anyway, we'll use the RCS on this now to fine tune this, because I usually equip my satellites with some kind of maneuvering capability, just because it's, you know, it's fun. Anyway, um, let's start scanning the surface for Keythane. Um, I won't do it all on... Um, all on camera, but uh, I have done most of it now in uh, my own time, and it's well because of the way it's set up. The um, the moon's kind of looking like a basketball with all the uh, all the little rings, and it's missing bits in the middle and stuff. But anyway, I'm going to quickly set up an alarm clock so that I don't uh, miss my SOI change. Um, but yeah, well that's the end of the episode apparently. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you will come back and see the next episode with more stuff and very interesting things for reusable rockets, like um, some pretty cool tests. Anyway, this has been Chaos Tape. I will see you next time.